speak myself. It's true. Thanks, it's awesome to be back. We had such a crazy year for everybody. So surreal. Like, I didn't even know how excited I was until I actually got here. And I saw my friends, I saw the cliffs, I saw the platforms. It's been a long time since we've been up to 27 meters. It's going to be an interesting year. It's going to be an interesting first stop. I'm super excited. I mean, we've been waiting for so long. Dive again from the rocks, from bridges, from everywhere platforms and just enjoy my family because uh, I missed it, all of you so much. And once we're back together again, things kick off and click just like we've never left each other. Whoa! <laughs> Look at this right there, that's the perfect dive. That was absolutely cutting right there into the water. What a noise, what a real trail. What a maneuver. Unbelievable. Ah, uh, welcome everyone to the beautiful and famous Cote d'Azur in southern France along the beautiful waters of the Mediterranean Sea. Today we are hitting the reset button with a new era for the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series and it all kicks off here just outside of the village of San Rafael, France. Thanks everyone for joining us. I'm Trace Worthington, psyched to be alongside Red Bull Cliff Diving expert Joey Zuber as we bring you stop number one of the 2021 World Series live from France. In short, Joey, great to see you. We are back. Oh, Trace, great <laughs> to see you too. I mean, Trace, the atmosphere here is just amazing. Everything from the divers to the audience on site. There's a buzz in the atmosphere. Now, Trace, a lot of sports are on the comeback trails, but what's different about the sport of cliff diving, not all of these athletes have had that chance to dive from heights ranging from 20 to 27 metres. So after a long break, they're all feeling the nerves, no doubt. But what's imp impressive is that they're not holding back and they're still choosing to throw down huge dives at the first tour stop. Uh, yeah, and this is the first of those six stops here in San Rafael, France. Then we head up north to Scandinavia for stop number two in Oslo, Norway, followed by a great stop, Mostar, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Down Patrick Head, Ireland will host stop number four before we book, go back to a diver favorite in Ponignano, Amare, Italy. Stop number six in the season finale will take place at a brand new location, the first ever indoor event in Baku, Azerbaijan. Looking forward to it. And but for obviously the first stop here, Joey, in the outdoor elements, not indoor here in the raw uh, cliffs of the southern France area, spectacular location. And it's been 21 months since the divers last competed, Joey. That's a long time. And it's been really cool to see what the athletes have been up to during their time off and away from competition. Absolutely. Amazing shots of watching the athletes climb up the cliff here. So some of the athletes have been quite busy in the off season. Here's Rhiannon and Iflam with a first ever balloon dive into the Lockstock Dam in Australia, not too far from the capital, Canberra. A very technically challenging project. Then Konstantin Popovich making a splash in Romania wow. with another first, this <laughs> one being an underground cliff dive in a salt mine. Now watch this, just falling inches away in parallel with the cliff face. There's always spectacular images with Red Bull cliff diving. Early smart, Noel Weymouth, a noble cause during these times. This is the Clean Cliffs Project with the aim of cleaning up the environment in and around our beautiful cliff faces. Very important indeed. Jonathan Perez keeping it Mexican style by diving into the unique cenotes, which are naturally occurring sinkholes around the Yucatan Peninsula. And he did this expedition with his good friend and mentor, Orlando Duque. Great stuff, and now Orlando is on site today, and as we return to official competition, the big names are back, and they're still looking strong. Yep, here they are, Gary Hunt and Rhiannon Iflan, and between the two of them, they've got a lot of yeah. Kai <laughs> Kelly trophies to their name. Gary with eight remarkable Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series titles, Rhiannon Iflan, an undefeated season in 2019. She'll be tough to beat this year, but here's a man who can challenge Gary Hunt, and that is Konstantin Popovich. He's technically brilliant and has a tough mindset. And to give Rihanna Nifland a run is Jessica McCauley, who placed second in the 2019 season. Now she's finding success diving for Canada. And it's been a while, so here's an update on how the competition format works. Eight women and eight men are permanent divers in 2021. 
four wildcard divers will be added at every stop for a total of 24 athletes. It's four rounds of diving, each of them being judged, and every dive counts. Only three seconds to judge a diver's execution, which includes the takeoff from the dive point, position in the air, and form. And of course, the critical water entry. The scoring is simple. A panel of five judges score between one and 10. The low and high scores are scratched. The remaining three multiplied together by the degree of difficulty equaling the total score. So the more flips and twists, the higher the degree of difficulty. At every World Series stop, four total dives make up the final score. Points are awarded at each stop and added together, which go towards the World Series standings, and the divers can scratch their lowest competition result. And in the end, they're all chasing one thing, the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series title and the prestigious King Kaakili Trophy. Well, a beautiful location here in the French Riviera and an unpredictable season on tap, Joey. The first event back since September 14th of 2009 and the first time ever at this particular location. Oh, and what a spectacular location it is. <laughs> beautiful drone shots. There's, well, that's where we need to be, Trace Worthington. We're we in the do. wrong spot on the boat. <laughs> that is prime viewing here in St. Raphael in France. Beautiful monolithic cliff face. Yeah, and you know, there's four total rounds of diving. Three have been completed. And here's how things went down in the earlier rounds for the women. Okay, this is round one off the cliff. Rihanna Nifland off to a flying start, scoring nines on this particular dive. So this is the pure form of the sport. No equipment, no platform, straight from the rock face. Crystal clear waters that we've got here today. Fantastic conditions as well. Set for a great fourth and final round to come. And here we have Molly Carlson, the rookie, just 22 years of age, scoring three nine and a halves. Not far off the, the, the perfect 10, sitting in second place after round two and three for that matter. So, so impressive. This is her first competition as a wildcard and to be diving so well. That, ladies and gentlemen, is absolutely impressive. Uh, Jessica McCauley here stepping up the degree of difficulty. Reverse triple somersault in the tuck position. Okay, this is all about pushing the limits in round three and four, trying to max out the degree of difficulty. Currently sitting in third place in the competition at the moment. So those are our contenders. <laughs> and anticipation definitely builds as we're about to begin after a 637 day hiatus. Nice to be back in France where the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series made its debut in 2009. That was in La Rochelle about 900 kilometers northwest of here. And there are the judges. Look at that cliff hanging on the <laughs> side. That's a, <laughs> literally a risky spot there. We have uh, Claudio de Miro of Italy, our head judge and uh, Cyril Mechcon is here of France and Antonio Martinez of Mexico. Uh, Ilda Komen is here, who dove in the 1980 and 1988 Olympics. And Olivier Morneau Richard of Canada fills out the five judge panel. Beautiful weather out here. No excuses for the divers. Look at that 28 degrees Celsius, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Warm waters this time of the year. And that's uh, just getting better and better, Joey. What a beautiful setting for the divers. It is, especially for the first tour stop. You want the stop to have obviously good conditions. You can't always have that. So if it was a an event where there's high winds and rough seas, that doesn't make it easy for the first stop, but this is magic. Flat water <laughs> should see some great entries today. Yeah, so after three rounds of diving, it is the lowest score, so the last place will run first, and that of Jackie Valente, and then you go down the list. Number eight, Maria Paula Quintero, the young diver of Colombia. Look for her for sure. Anna Batter runs number seven, by the way. Mm -hmm. Her final stop of her career on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series will send her off today. As we look at the top four, Anthea Panisi after round three. Jessica McCauley will run number 10. Molly Carlson, the rookie and wild card diver. And then, of course, the legendary Rhiannon Ifland will dive last. And look at all the boats that have snuck into the area here in the French Riviera and the Côte d'Azur. And 
We are ready to rock. Joey Zuber with Jackie Valenti, our first diver, the 35-year-old Brazilian, 17th start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. And her gymnastics background is very impressive. I've always liked that. Uh, particularly with the arm stand dives, and we're about to see something pretty spectacular. One of the most difficult dives that, you, that can be performed currently in the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. So has that gymnastics background and combining it with the beautiful sport of cliff diving. So be ready to be impressed. Listen to the crowd, Trace. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, that's that the, that's the vibe that we missed, that right? That feels good right there. That is electric. Okay, putting the mouth guard in. And that uh, denotes how strong the impact is. 71 kilometers per hour. So watch this. So she'll prepare backwards here. 70 feet above the water and doing an arm stand. Okay, need a lot of concentration here. So placing the hands carefully. So you have to take your time pressing in the handstand. Wow. Great dive, so difficult, Joey, despite a little bit of a big splash, which a lot of the viewers new to cliff diving will always look at the splash in diving. But I tell you what, that was a difficult dive, impressive. Yeah, it was, okay. So a lot of people see the end of the dive, but we've got to talk about the rest of the 75%, which is the takeoff and the flight. And let's talk about bravery. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> just to even stand on the platform is difficult enough, but to do it on your head, yeah, going backwards. Splash, splash all you want. Exactly. <laughs> Coming out there, this is the Barani, the last part of the dive, which is a front somersault with a half twist. They have to look at the water and try and make those all important calculations. Watch out, bending the arms, pushing, kicking the legs, generating around the rotation, rotation, one and a half twist, arms come out wide to stop the twist. So perhaps she needed to be just a little bit slower. You can see how she was completely straight at the end, trying to slow down the dive. But once again, commendable for performing one of the most difficult dives the women can currently perform. <laughs> we are back, it says there. And when Jackie is back home in Brazil, she helps her mother as a seamstress. She's been doing a lot of that, obviously, for obvious reasons over the past several months. And Jackie Valenti will come in with her final dive. Now, remember, all four scores are rolled up. So this particular dive was scored at 46.20. Then when you add all four together, 184.90. Part of the difficulty of this sport is just getting off the ski do and getting back up to the top, Joey. Here we go. With no the, doubt. Yeah. We've seen a few yeah. little falls there. I'm like, hang on a second. How can you can handle this off the platform and getting off the ski do? <laughs> Seems to be a challenge. Great shot of the uh, of the Cap de Ramon, the island here, and this new stop. and. We have a birthday girl on hand, Joey, the wild card diver, Genevieve Bradley, turning 29 today. Happy birthday to you, Genevieve, and have a great day here at the first stop of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Actually, we've had a lot of cliff divers with the birthdays hovering around the month of June. A lot of Juners, a lot of June acrobatic people. Right. <laughs> now, this is interesting here. She grew up in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, not quite a diving mecca, but now resides in Honolulu, Hawaii, and Really enjoying taking in all the, the atmosphere, which uh, is it going to be expected throughout the day with the rest of the divers. They're really going to take in the audience. That they need to do. And this is what the divers miss, that feeling of being in front of the crowd after all this time. And she's lapping it up. That's it. <laughs> Good stuff. Listen to them cheering. Wow. Oh, there we go. Singing happy birthday. Wow. How does that feel, Genevieve, huh? That's the birthday you want, not right? Only, not only that, but this is the, the second, the only the second career start of her Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series career. So take it in, Genevieve. Happy birthday to you. Good luck on this dive. Here we go, Joey. What's she doing? Okay, so we have a back three somersaults in the tuck position. Once again, we're pushing the limits of degree of difficulty. So aerial awareness on this dive is key. There's the scuba divers. Keeping everything safe down there. So they'll also splash the water to help the athletes see the surface. Very transparent water.
That's a great way to blow out the candles on your birthday, Genevieve. <laughs> yeah, <that's> hitting <laughs> that fourth round dive. <laughs> nice line, Trace. Thank nice you. line. I like that. Now, it was interesting. If you listen to her on the platform, she was actually counting to herself, talking to herself. As we were saying before, very nerve-wracking standing on the platform. So she was saying, OK, count of three, I'm going to go. There's the action of her jumping up and down. So it is the first stop of the season. So it's all about getting back on the horse and getting the rhythm again. So these dives, in particular, where you're rotating backwards, you need to count the somersaults. So watch here. So we'll be jumping up. Count. One somersault there. She sees the water. Coming around again. Two, she sees the water. And then she knows she needs to kick out. Head back, looking for the water. At this point, Trace, you really start to feel the wind picking up, the acceleration curve. And there's that water entry. Very tough impact if you're not completely vertical. Not bad. <laughs> Now, it's been a while, Joey. I mean, if, if, if you had over 600 days off since your last competition, how would you be feeling right now? Shaking like a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> Genevieve with a 47.50 on that particular dive. Once again, the high and the lower tossed out from the five judges. The remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty. So 200 points. Total for her, 10 women left here in this fourth round. Gita Van Kotreich replacing Lisanne Richard, the 36-year-old from the Netherlands. First ever start and debut on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. And we, you were just talking about over 600 days off. How about never competing in this series? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Talk about a little bit of pressure. Yeah. So that bell signifies that the judges are ready, the divers, the safety divers down below are ready. So now it's time for the diver to focus. Not bad for the first ever time on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Right, not bad at all. Choosing to play it safe, relatively safe. There's her husband, Matt Cooper, incidentally. The first time we've had a married couple diving together in the competition. So wow. later on in the men's round, we'll see Matt Cooper diving. That's pretty impressive. The first ever. I like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, and we'll go into another story about Matt Cooper later as well. All right. Okay, taking off here, there's the one twist squaring out. Okay, once again, the half turn coming into the water. So it's really important, once again, you try to be as vertical as possible on the entry, but the judges still need to look at the takeoff. Is it nice and strong? They need to look at the form in the air trace. The legs have to be together. And of course, try to be as vertical as possible. At the end of the dive, they flatten the feet to make sure they can make a hole for the body to pass through to try and bring down the splash. They're the judges leaning on the edge of the cliff. They're weighing in. Bunch of sevens there, so toss out a six and a half and a seven. 63.55 five, five on that particular dive on round four, and then you add all four together. 20, two thousand or 219 for Jeannie, the NCAA All-American. Spends a lot of time in the States, obviously, with Matt. She went to the University of Houston. She'll go back to the top now. Three divers down. And getting into the top ten here. Iris Schmidbauer of Germany. Spent a lot of time in New Zealand since the beginning of the pandemic. Hasn't left there, in fact. There's three somersaults, so difficulty stepping up on this optional round out. Absolutely huge 4.3. So she only learned this dive at the previous season, 2019. Here we go. How will she do? New permanent diver, by the way. So the splash again, Joey, we talk about that, but a difficult dive, three somersaults, but again, to those new to cliff diving, how much does that splash affect your score? It does, but I mean, once again, the judges still need to actually fairly look at everything, okay? Like I said before, you've got to have a great takeoff. So they're looking to see it really powerful. They want to see maximum elevation from the platform. You can see a swing in the arms up. That's pretty good. The form in the air, not too bad. The legs are not splitting apart. Ah, but at the end of the dive, God, it. We're now we need to see this in slow motion. There's a break of form, so the judges will deduct pretty heavily for this. That's a sign that you're slow in terms of the rotation. Look at her holding on to that pipe position, holding, holding, holding. Watch here very closely, and the legs have to bend, so that's considered a break of position. Once again, that's a sign that the takeoff wasn't quite right. So you need so much power. That's why the preseason training is oh so important. You need a lot of power, a lot of jumping, a lot of strength. 
and of course working on flexibility. And she hasn't been doing this sport that long, doesn't actually come from a professional diving background, but still she is so impressive. She's had some great results, and I'm sure she'll have more to come this year. In fifth right now for Schmidbauer, no podium today. Great camaraderie amongst all the athletes supporting each other, yeah. helping coach. Sunshine and silver blue sparkling Mediterranean water living up to its reputation today and everyone having a great time in this area. Glamorous beach resorts in this area. San Tropez and Cannes as well as the independent microstate of Monaco close by as we head to the top now, Yana Nasariava. Great solid diver here, Joey. 28 years old, she turns 29 in two days on June 14th, another June birthday. Landed number four in the overall World Series points after the 2019 season, and she keeps improving. She's sort of that, mm -hmm. that silent killer in the diving yeah, world, yeah, right? Yeah. Like if you look at her yeah. results for the World Series standings, every single year she improves, so never count out Yana Nestoriava. Okay. You'll see Yana standing forwards here, putting her arms above the head. Three somersaults, one half twist. Maximum power required to make sure she complete the dive. A lot of stuff going on in the air, Joey. Throwing as hard as she can to make sure she finished the dive. Once again, the good camaraderie. Little nod of approval, always the A-OK -okay sign to the scuba divers in the water. That's a safety procedure. To pull into the lead, she'll need a 90.25 on this dive to get on the podium at least a 43.15. And that would mean that you need to score eights from the judges. That's always the nervous way. You do your dive, but you don't always know which scores you're gonna get. Generally speaking, Trace, you tend to feel what's happening. You know if you've over-rotated or under-rotated, so she knows that. So. She'll be keen to see what the judges think of the dive and to see if they judge the execution well. Could do with pulling into that pike position a little tighter there, Trace. But faring very well at the first stop here in France. Yeah, and again, this is the restart of the World Series after the longest break in history. 21 months at 637 days. The last event, the final stop of Bilbao, Spain, September 14th, 2019. So all the divers really dusting off the suits and and getting their feet wet. And the first time in front of an audience in a long time, Joey, 70.20, not bad. She'll keep three sixes and pull in a second with a 257.60. Speaking of the audience, I do, I do think it helps the athletes rise to the occasion. Oh, there it is. You know, I mean, you stand there and you're like, there's the energy, that's what we like to feel. And don't forget to follow us at Red Bull Cliff Diving on Instagram and check out the Red Bull Cliff Diving Facebook page. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. A big thanks to all the fans for coming back and supporting the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. I know our entire crew loves it, and uh, of course the divers appreciate it as well. And of course, look at all the amazing photos on our social media outlets, videos posted over the past several days, and today from this spot, San Rafael, France. And the beautiful French Riviera. Trace Worthington here alongside Joey Zuber, if you just joined us, and we are in the midst of the women's fourth and final round. Eleanor Smart is 13th coming into this fourth round. Ranked number five in the overall series points following 2019 season. Earned a permanent diver spot. Busy girl, we'll talk about that in a second, Joey. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff going on in the calves and the ankles. Boom, Ellie Smart, not bad. Kind of drills that dive. Showing us the twisting action there. <laughs> She's really happy. And that's what I was talking about before. Sometimes you hit the water and you know you've done a good dive. You can hear that water tearing around your ears as you cut through the water. Now she's looking at the judges there, eagerly awaiting to see what they're gonna give her. Okay, so she's been very busy during the off season but it's all about the dive right now. Look how deep they're going through the water. So sometimes they travel about four to five meters deep. And it's six meters, about 19 feet deep for those who are wondering, because everybody wants to know the depth of the water. Yes. That's a common question. Yeah, yeah, so the minimum requirement is around five meters. So on average, I'd say they go about sort of between three and a half to four meters deep. But a massive <laughs> impact there. So Eleanor Smart being very busy 
in the off-season, so she's constructing a high diving facility in Utah, in your yep. hometown as yep. well, the Clean Clips Project. I see it Managing a diving club. <laughs> I don't know where she finds the time. And slide, and yeah, sliding a little bit of cliff diving in between. Yep. And the Clean Clips Project, she does that with her boyfriend, Owen Weymouth, who's a cliff diver as well. And look at that, a bunch of eights and a seven, so that will bode well for the overall score when you multiply the middle three, high and lower toss, by the degree of difficulty, 91.20. So Ellie Smart, the 25-year-old from the United States, will pull into the lead here. So great job by Ellie Smart. She is sixth to go of 12. That's a relieving feeling. It's the fourth and final round. So just reminding everybody, there's four rounds of diving. So this is all about pushing the limits and as the round progresses we're going to see more and more difficult dives eagerly awaiting the contenders everyone enjoying the beautiful temperature today and look at this here's the last and final competition before retiring anna batter the 37 year old german mother of two coming in as a wild card diver but what a send-off for her today i mean no better location it is so we'll talk about some of her pioneering competitions in the past always a big smile from anna batter Job coming off this 21 meter, 70 foot platform into the Mediterranean. So impressive. Three somersaults. Look at that, Anna Batter in her last and final competition and the last dive right there. You saw it. What do you think, Joey? Is she going to be impressed with that, happy with her career? Yeah, I think it's very emotional to kind of say, yeah. OK, that's my send off. She's also the mother of two. So I think that's a great way to finish her career in such a beautiful location. She was a pioneering athlete, took part of the very first Red Bull cliff diving women's competition as well as the very first FINA. Look at that smile. High diving championships, that's a big <laughs> smile. She knows it's the last dive. She's always got beautiful form in the air. That's what she's known for. Yes, a slight over rotation, but the rest of it, the takeoff, just watch her line. Look at the leg line there. You can see how the body's completely folded like a pocket knife. So the closer the body is or the chest is to the legs, the better the points from the judges. That's what they're looking for. So full marks in regards to that. Slight miscalculation. As you can see, you only need to be ever so, ever so slightly off that vertical point and some splash kicks up. But still, beautiful diving. Anna Bada, we send you off. Yeah. Thank you for everything you've done for the sport. Love it. Congratulations, Anna Batter. 37-year-old German in her last dive on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. What a career, capping it off right here. 64.60 on that dive, and she'll move into third, 257.95. And of course, uh, if you know cliff diving, you know the legendary Orlando Duque. Well, Orlando retired in 2019 after the last stop in Bilbao, Spain, and he's with David O'Qui. Dave. Orlando, a legend of the sport, and you're back retired as a spectator. What is that like? Uh, you know, it feels good. At least I'm around. I'm watching all the other dives compete. Uh, I'm enjoying the competition. A lot less stressful than when I was up there on the platform with the guys. Absolutely, and you've been a big involvement in mentoring Maria, who we're about to see dive. What has it taken to get her back after such a long break? Uh, I think it's been difficult on all the guys, you know. It's, it was a long time, it was a long break, but uh, if you watch the way they're diving, you would think they never stop, you know. There's high level of competition, so I'm looking forward to really big dives now. Awesome, thank you so much, Orlando, and enjoy. Thank you. All right, good to see the legend Orlando Duque, and don't forget to check out Orlando's World of Diving podcast. Available, available, excuse me, on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Season one, episode eight, by the way, features this woman right here, Maria Paula Quintero, the legendary Orlando Duque. Had a great interview with her in his podcast. And so Maria Paula Quintero, the youngest, she turns 21 in 11 days, another June birthday, earned a permanent diver spot last year, mentored by Orlando Duque, the youngest diver ever to earn a permanent diver position on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series and is the youngest female to earn a World Series podium at the age of 18. Here's the future. Wow. 
It is an impressive statistic there. Also, I think she was the first person in the world to perform a front four somersaults. The first person? Yep. I've done well, one on a trampoline. Have you now? You're talking about. Oh, Trace. <laughs> How good are you? Can you show it to me? After show. Come on, let's bust out some flips in the trampoline. I'll show you what I got too. <laughs> okay, signaling the scuba divers to splash the water. There's Orlando looking on. Needs a 67.95 to pull into first. Look at that, a top-notch dive with a high degree of difficulty. Orlando likes it. Will the judges on this one? Joey, break it down. It's so amazing to see these dives. These are called inward dives. You have to stand backwards, but jump up, spin in towards the platform. You'll see what I'm talking about in the replay from side on. So it's very scary to do these dives. You have to come very close to the platform, kicking out. And look, just a slight over-rotation, but every season that I see her diving, I see a lot of improvement. So I know Orlando's working very hard with her in Kali, so you see her in the tuck position, that's the ball shape. So the divers have to submit their dive sheets explaining exactly what dive they're going to do so the judges know what they're looking for. So she's completed all the necessary skills and maneuvers in the right position, but with more competitions, more experience, then comes the better entries because that's the hard part. Those little adjustments, those fine adjustments, split second, Adjustments at the end of the dives are so difficult. A little bit of a golf clap from Orlando, by the way, so I don't think he's totally sold on it. No, no, not yet. Yes, he knows. Room for improvement, but still, I'm always impressed. Good enough here, though, 74.10. She knows she has some top-notch divers yet to come. Still puts her in first place, but will it hold? Xanthia Panisi coming up, Jessica McCauley, Molly Carlson, the wild card, and Rhiannon Ifland. The dominant one will run last. Yep, the tension's going to start to build. So get ready. We're going to see some impressive diving. So the climb up to the cliff face trace, pretty difficult as well. Quite challenging, very vertical. When you have to keep repeating that for your practice dives and in the competition. And here's Xanthia Panisi, Pini 22 years old, another youngster. Spent a lot of time recently training with Rhiannon and Iflin in Australia. So. A good person to surround yourself with if you want to get better in the sport of cliff diving, I think. Oh, absolutely, Trace. Also working with the Olympic coach in Brisbane, making sure their strength and conditioning program is up to scratch. She's been working hard. Will it pay dividends? Judges are ready. Panisi with a difficult dive, a bit of a splash, displacing a lot of water on that, Joey. Same dive as Maria Paolo Quintero, but she's chosen to do it in a pike position, so her body's longer, makes it even more difficult. Maybe she was a little bit too strong on takeoff there. Yeah. So hands above the head, they throw forwards to generate rotation. Absolutely exquisite position in the air coming around, and she just puts her feet in front, and that causes the body to go past that vertical line. As I said before, very easy to make a lot of splash in these dives, but with more competitions, they'll get in a better rhythm. Beautiful, beautiful form, that flexibility. You know how hard you have to work with that flexibility? Can you touch <laughs> yeah. your toes, Trace? <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, I, yeah, he's I, there. Almost. Okay, you still got it. <laughs> Great job, though, by the 22-year-old Aussie, the Filipino-Australian. Seventh is her best finish. We'll see what she turns out today with the score. So the judges weigh in on this one, Joey, 64 points. So remember, the high and the lower toss, the remaining three multiplied by the degree, degree of difficulty, which is really high in her particular dive, second place, so behind Quintero. That's right. You see our divers warming up here. Greg Luganis, our sports director on the cliff face, yeah. legendary Olympian. Two-time Olympic gold medalist, author and diving legend, as you said, Joey. Love having Greg here as our sport director. And we're lucky to have him on the World Series. 
Absolute legend. Good seeing Greg. Fans hanging in there and here in southern France, having a great time. Everyone's just really psyched to see each other. And these divers, I'll be nervous with all the people down there. They right. haven't really performed, you know, they're all a lot of show divers and everything else, and they haven't really performed and dove in front of many people. So now, Jessica McCauley, mm -hmm. former British diver, now representing Canada. So she's been in a fortunate situation to be able to train in the incredible facility in Montreal. Yeah, a lot of great resources for her. Yeah. So here we have back three somersaults in the pipe position. She only needs to score fives to take the lead, but she wants better than that. Here we go. Oh, beautiful in the air, Joey. Everything about the takeoff and the position in the air was absolutely exquisite. It's a real shame she couldn't quite finish the end of the dive, as we are mentioning earlier. So she's now representing Canada. So in Montreal, they have an indoor high diving facility. So they've got everything ranging from one meter, three meter, five, seven, and 10, and a 17 meter well, and a 20 meter platform. So yeah. this does help. Yeah, well, you and I were talking about during the time, the downtime over the past 600 days, a lot of divers in some countries, you know, didn't have the resources. They don't have nope. a platform tall enough. So she made a good move going up to Canada and using their resources. Absolutely. So that really does pay dividends. So they're diving indoors there, of course, so you can train uh, year round. So when you get outdoors, sometimes it's a little difficult for the aerial awareness because you'll have a blue ocean and the blue sky. Occasionally, some of the divers can get mixed up with that. So a bit of a shame on the last part of the Entry there for Jessica McCauley. Came out a little bit late in the dive, but still, she's in the running. Pulled together a huge 2019 season, finishing second overall in the World Series points and low scores across the board. Not what Jessica McCauley wants to see from the judges panel. 70 points on that particular dive. Remember, four dives. Well, three were in the books, now four in the books. For McCauley, 300.55. She moves into first and will guarantee herself a podium with only two competitors left. Nice work. That's a nice feeling, though, knowing you're on the podium. But it's always nerve-wracking when you're standing there on the cliff and you're looking at the two divers to come to finish off the round. Here's the rookie, Molly Carlson, Trace Worthington. Well, who trains with Jessica McCauley now. So Jessica knows exactly what Molly Carlson, the rookie, is capable of. Her first ever appearance on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Incredible. And she's sitting in second place. How's that? Your foot, like you said, the first appearance. Wow. Reverse triple somersault. Not bad. Molly Carlson, welcome to Red Bull Cliff Diving. Yes, Just welcome him. to Red Bull Cliff Diving. <laughs> she actually found that, like I said before, that adjustment coming from the indoor training to the outdoor, quite difficult. But wow, I've been watching her on the social media, looking at the dive she's been doing in Canada. Absolutely outstanding. Well, you were telling me she just started. Yes, <laughs> and this is the story. Like, in, she actually started training only in 2020. In August, by October 2020, she just started to high dive. So in less than a year, she's performing these dives, which are insanely difficult. I've actually, that's unheard of. I mean, most athletes right. will have at least a Mm, two to three years of cliff diving experience, say 10 to 15 years of diving experience before that. There's the head flicking back, counting the second somersault. Watch the kick out, nice and sharp, looks at the toes briefly, and you can tell her core strength is absolutely brilliant. Nothing loose, nothing wobbly, just a shame she over-rotated. Do you know what it was? Such a powerful takeoff, full of adrenaline. That's what happens in competition sometimes. You're full of adrenaline, and you overcook it every now and then. That's quite a common thing to happen. So that it. takes a bit of time to settle the nerves and know how to handle that during the competition. I mean, just to get through four rounds of diving and the first three rounds, she had a spectacular performance, putting herself in a position to win this competition. Will she get a podium? here with a 58.5 zeros. Pulls into the lead, a grandstand rookie performance. Well done, Molly Carlson, the wild card diver, pulling it off. Molly Carlson, a stellar debut performance. 
How's that? A bit like Rihanna Nifland, her first appearance as a wild card. She won the competition not far off that point. There's her coach, Stefan, by the way, who she was hugging. So he's put a lot of work into her training and it's paid off. She's got to be absolutely thrilled with that podium so far. But let's talk about the last woman standing on the platform, Rihanna <laughs> Ifland. Yeah, we don't have enough time to talk about her. She has won 18 World Series events of 24 since her first victory as a wild card diver in 2016. And since then has become the most dominant female in the history of Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. The four-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion, getting everybody pumped up, went undefeated in 2019 with seven straight wins. And in total, what are we talking about? Eight straight wins, also including the previous season? Yeah, right. Yeah, eight straight. I mean, she has a 75% chance of winning when you look at the stats and numbers. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it is so rare when you find someone with so much talent, such as Rihanna Nifland. Splash the water, there's the bell. Here we go, let's cap it off. Final diver, Carlson in the lead. The wild card from Canada, 313-30. And Rhiannon Iflin, the Aussie sensation, still golden and still the queen of cliff diving. That's what we know and expect from Rhiannon Iflin time and time again. She knows how to perform under pressure. She must have been feeling that from Molly Carlson, but hey, she's a pro, man. Rihanna Nifflin in a league of her own. Fabulous. And she might be trying a new dive this season. She might do a front quad somersault with a half twist. So imagine what she can do with even more degree of difficulty. Here's the inward triple. So she comes from a trampoline background. So she's accustomed to landing feet first. And that's why she's so good with the entries. But the other point is this. She's got it right here. The mental capacity, the mental strength. Yeah. She knows how to dive when it counts under pressure. The winning dive, Rihanna Nifland, arms nice and wide, standing nice and tall, a vanishing act. Ladies and gents, the rip <laughs> entry for Rihanna Nifland yet again. Another electrifying performance by the greatest female in Red Bull cliff diving. Rihanna Nifland of Australia. Couple nines, couple eight and a halves. That ought to do it. Look how relaxed she is. <laughs> Take it all in, Rihanna and take a bow. Another stellar performance and that youngster right there, Molly Carlson, doing a great job hanging in there, but it is Rhiannon Nifflin with a 98.80 who will do it once again. You add all four together, 376.45. Drop the mic, Rhiannon Nifflin wins it again. And if I'm not mistaken, I think she's actually just broken her own highest competition score. Wow. How's that for the first competition? Just like that, hasn't missed a beat. Impressive. We need to double check the stats on that one, but I do believe she has broken it. Impressive. I mean, how do you do that after that long break and just put it all together? I do know that she did build a platform uh, near her hometown off the cliff as well. And uh, so she did manage to get some cliff diving training in before the season started. Not a great deal. And you're right. I mean, re she had a 358.05 in Mostar Bosnia and Herzegovina in 2019. Yeah. So yeah. the 376.45, you're absolutely, absolutely right, Joey Zuber. And not only broke it by wow. a little bit, by a lot. By a lot. That's huge. So Rihanna Nifflin with an all-time high score after four rounds 376.45 wow what a day for the wild card diver molly carlson of canada in second jesse mccall mccauley also of canada so that facility up there obviously paying off joey oh no doubt no doubt whatsoever how is that canada number two number three all right well what a great day for rihanna nifflin kicking off the season after over 600 days of a hiatus and now she has not missed a beat and we'll send it down to David O'Queeve who is with the winner of today's competition, Dave. It has been a long break and you've come back and you've come back with a bang. Does that mean it has more meaning to you? Uh, yeah, for sure. You know, turning up here a few days ago, um, everything was kind of, you know, we didn't know what was, what how it was going to be and how it was going to feel up there on the platform so it's such a relief but to tell you the truth like I felt in such a good headspace um, over the last two days and pff, I was enjoying being back competing more than ever so yeah it's so good to be back.
Amazing. And what about, there's a lot of competition out there, Stiff, Molly Carlson, for example. How do you think it's going to go for the rest of the season? Yeah, look, I remember uh, four years ago when I was the newcomer and, uh, yeah, Molly's diving really, really strong. I can see that she's going to be breathing down my neck the whole uh, season. And uh, also my training partner, Xanthia Panissi, is doing such an amazing job. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting and fun season. Amazing. Thank you, Ree. Thank you. All right, congratulations, Rihanna Nifflin, with her 19th career win on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Yep, and also acknowledging the contenders behind her as well, so she knows she's got to keep yeah. working hard. <laughs> Jess McCauley. She's well aware. <laughs> placing third there. I just love her elegant lines in the air. That back triple pike, one of my favorite dives to watch. And like I said before, a few more competitions, you'll have that dialed in. But she'll be happy with a podium finish. Diving Canada, hey? Feeling proud of their divers. Molly Carlson here. Look at that, so powerful. I just think she had too much rotation, maybe needed to kick out slightly earlier. But there you go. First tour stop on the podium. Big smile celebrations tonight for her. Rihanna Nifland, cool and calm as ever. Nine straight wins. That's another record, by the way. And she always likes to finish the competition with this particular dive, the inward triple, so her hardest dive she likes to put in round three. She likes to get that over and done with so she can focus on her favorite dive, which is that, and paying dividends for her once again. Be proud, Brianna Nifland. So we'll recognize the top three female divers in today's competition before we move on to the 12 men. Jessica McCauley in third, Molly Carlson. First ever appearance on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series and finds herself with a bouquet of flowers here in Southern France in the French Riviera in the beautiful area of San Rafael. But the champion goes to the golden one. Rhiannon Iflin of Australia in her 19th career Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series victory. You and I were taking a walk yesterday, Joey, and I said, is there, is there a color that's golder than gold? Is that, even, is that even a thing? It could be. It could from be. another, from, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. from the planet cliff diving, right? <laughs> yeah. Gary's from there. Yeah, Gary, we'll see him in a minute. <laughs> What a start to the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series after the longest break in history for obvious reasons. 21 months, 637 days. And Rhiannon Iflin has not missed a beat. In fact, Joey, you are absolutely right. It looks like she's getting better and stronger. And as I mentioned, welcome to Red Bull Cliff Diving, Molly Carlson in second place with 160 points. That's a great way to get yourself a permanent diver spot mm -hmm. for the next season right there. Good point. Along with her teammate, Jessica McCauley, with 130 points. Yana Nestiraba rounds out the top eight. Great women's competition. All right, well, Gary Hunt now diving for France. And look at that. A lot of fellow country mates down there. And he has a lot of King Kaakili trophies, and he's got the confidence to still be the greatest. And I'm the eight-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion. Of course, it's good to be back. Uh, this is what we love to do. Yeah, we're on in typical form, the Magic Man. And it's been a tough time, um, almost two years, not being able to do what we love. You're making it look oh, easy. Tens that's a record of five tens in a row from the judges. Yeah, it's a challenge. I'm sure, I'm going to be nervous, but uh, I was born to do this. I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life. I've never trained this hard in my whole life, so I'm happy to to get back up on that platform and I'll be confident that I can do the best that I'm able to do. It's uh, tougher every year, but that's what I love. I, I don't want an easy challenge and uh, that's what spurs me on to, to train even harder because I want to stay on top for as long as possible. 
I'm just going to show the world that I've been working very hard and that I'm still the best. It's pretty cool that Gary has now relocated. Well, he's always been in uh, Paris, France, but now has citizenship in France. And uh, I mean, tell you what, look at all the people that came out to see him. Right. Can you imagine <laughs> that? You just changed nationality, diving in front of your home crowd. God, I'm impressed with how many people are in the water there today. So they should be very proud of their Frenchman, Gary Hunt. All right, let's bring, us, bring you up to speed on the first three rounds of diving. So unfortunately, we've got uh, Jonathan Perez, one of the most impressive divers we have in the season. So he uh, fortunately had a bit of a bad landing over rotating. So that can happen to the best of us. Even Gary's had some pretty hard landings in his career. So unfortunately, he won't be partaking in the competition today. Off the cliff, Gary Hunt. And back in form right off the bat. Eight and a half from the judges. Leaning away from the cliff face to make sure he can clear it safely. But as always, this man knows how to handle pressure. Catalin Preda. This is the intermediate dive right from the get-go. He's pushing hard into this competition. He just looks so focused here. In great physical shape. And look, he's really here to also push Gary Hunt coming into this fourth and final round. How about, Carlos how about this guy? <laughs> Check this out. A world first front. Three and a half somersaults, one and a half twists. Nobody has ever done this dive before. Watch this. How he presses down. Watch his head. His head actually touches the platform Whoa. here. Kicks off. Ro throws into the twist. Watch how hard he has to work here. Holding on the pike. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Hold, hold, hold. A lot of centrifugal force wanting to pull the arms off the leg comes around. So just to even make this dive is outstanding. Carlos Camino, first competition, not playing it safe. Pushing it. <laughs> so after three rounds of diving, heading into four with Preta in the lead, Hunt in second, and Popovich in first. Here's the running order. Alberto Devora with the lowest score after three rounds of diving will dive first. And like to watch Alessandro De Rose. He dives eight, a couple Americans in there, and David Colturi and Andy Jones will run five and seven. I mean, you're looking at the world's best men cliff divers. The top 12. Gamino, the wild card diver. Popovich will run 10. Gary Hunt has some catching up to do because Catalin Peretta has sent a message to the legendary Hunt that he's here for business. Mm -hmm. He does mean business, and the crowd can appreciate it. Okay, we're gonna see some spectacular acrobatic maneuvers in the fourth and final round. The women's platform was 21 meters, 70 feet. Joey, now we step it up to 27 meters, 90 feet mm -hmm. above the Mediterranean for the men. It's like the equivalent of an eighth story in a high rise. So if you wanna to go to the high rise, look over the balcony, look down, you might get a sense of scale and perspective. The crowd roars to <laughs> kick off the men's round. Here's a guy that was born on New Year's Day, the 28-year-old Spaniard, Alberto Devora, the wild card diver, a last minute add-on to replace Artem Solchenko. Could not travel to France under the current restrictions. So we'll see if Devora can capitalize on his appearance here in France. Here we go, rotating forwards. See him breathing off of there. Very difficult dive, a little bit of a big splash, but he is fired up. <laughs> He's pumped. Look at the reaction. Nice. Wow. Kissing the sky. 10 G forces of impact. Man, when you're diving from that height, the last two to three meters, you start to feel the wind pick up, whoosh by your ears. Are you just psyched when you when you were when you were diving? Were you just psyched to hit the water with your feet? Yeah. <laughs> well, you're like, yes. <laughs> contentment, relief, everything, but also proud, especially if you've done the dive well. That's no greater feeling, let me tell you. I kind of miss that buzz, to be honest. It's um, it's something to behold, you know. It's such a great feeling after the competition, sense of accomplishment as well. Of also challenging your fear. So let me tell you this, all of these divers feel fear. Okay, if you think they don't, 
they do. So sometimes you wake up in the morning, it's difficult to even eat your breakfast because you're thinking about your dives, you're yeah. replaying everything over and over in your mind. So sometimes you have to find ways to calm yourself down, talk with a friend, take your mind off the topic, but you've got to get focused once you're on the end of the platform. <laughs> but what a thrill. No, I miss this sport dearly. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the divers when you when you talk to them, they say you have to embrace that fear. You have to take it all in and use it to your advantage. And 58.90, and just to get you back up to speed on the judging, five total judges. All right, score between one, zero and ten each. The high and the lower toss, the remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty. Four rounds of diving, all four rounds, all scores are added together for the grand totals. We head back to the top for Matt Cooper from the United States taking the spot of Jonathan Paredes. That's right, and he was here on site, supporting his wife, Jeannie, and then got the opportunity to dive here. Right place at the right time. <laughs> yeah, right. Matt Cooper not doing a bad job entertaining the crowd and putting on a show for the judges. Not bad at all, because yeah. he wasn't even expecting to dive in this competition. Just by luck, he was here, like <laughs> I said before, supporting his girlfriend. <laughs> and then how's that? Because he actually did some practice. Yeah. So obviously the sports director saw him dive and thought, OK, why not? Let's put yeah. Matt in there. And this has happened to a number of divers. I believe it was Konstantin Popovich as well, was just a yeah. shoe in And like, then... Hey, Matt, did you bring your trunks? <laughs> yeah, exactly. OK, good, 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 because you're in hey, the well, competition. Hey, hey, you're up. You're up in Five, but yeah, like. you're up at five. <laughs> grab, grab your trunks, buddy. <laughs> no, but what an opportunity. So I'm, I'm sure he's relishing that to get some valuable experience. So he's done some training at Area 47 in Austria. So I've been speaking to him on Facebook quite a, look, uh, quite a lot. He sends me his dives and we give a little bit of feedback from time to time as well. So he always trains there with Jeannie. He did tell us that this, this dive spot is the highest he's ever jumped from. So, you know, he only really got into this two days ago, you know, after, or yesterday. Yeah, so, so I think we're a little about 27. We're witnessing the highest he's ever dove from in his life right now. Yes. And Jonathan Paredes is okay, by the way. Just yep. a little sore, a little stiff. So we wish Johnny the best. We'll see him in Oslo, Norway. And Matt Cooper doing a great job replacing Johnny for today and coming in with a 6.5. He'll keep a pair of sixes for a grand total of 239 after you roll up all four scores. He's in sixth. Great job in the debut for Matt Cooper on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. God, he's got to be on a high after that. Nate Jimerson. The wild card diver replacing American Steve Labou from the great state of Minnesota. I always have to say that. I'm from there. Land of 10,000 lakes. <laughs> home to the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> I thought you were a Utah boy. Okay, you know, he, Minnesota. He and Owen, Owen Weymouth, so Owen, who dates Sally Smart, has been spending a lot of time in Minnesota. And uh, Nate and Owen have been getting after it, diving off a lot of cliffs outside of Minneapolis. Yep. That they there are cliffs there, by the way. Mm hmm. So after the dive, Nate's had a pretty interesting story just getting himself to this competition. So here we go. Check this out. Back arm stand. Two and a half somersaults with three twists. So scary. This is where you hope that grip tape is working well on the end. Right. See the body shaking. Wow. Trying to hold the line. Nate Jimerson pulling it around in the end, slicing through the Mediterranean. Pure cliff diving action once again. <laughs> this they, is all about this time is really starting to push it. So for him especially, it's been a very, very long time since he's done any high diving whatsoever. He was actually working in the House of Dancing Water, which is a prestigious show in, in Macau. So it's a bit like the Cirque du Soleil shows that you see. So he, uh, the show actually closed down. So he hasn't been doing any training and then he got the call to be in the competition. So only about three weeks ago, he made it to the States, snuck in some diving training. So he's faring very well. Wow. Actually, he can perform some incredibly challenging dives, front four somersaults, two and a half twists. So he needs to play it safe in this competition. So if he gets the chance to do more competitions, we may see some impressive skills from him. So there it is. Look at that shot. That gives you a sense of scale and height, doesn't it? Wow, and that with, big wide shot. And with Orlando not here, we have a new guy rocking the you know the long rope, which yeah, I man. love. You know the hair, right? Right. We've got to have some rock stars. We in the do. Field. We do. 
Nate getting an 84.60 on that by the five judges. You roll all four together, 285.75, fifth place. So Nate was three to go. Alexei Prigorov dives next, number four of 12. As we look at this beautiful location, Cap de Ramon and the Côte d'Azur, southern France, our great host in the town of San Rafael. And the next diver, Alexei Prigorov. What do you have to say? Uh, ladies Olympic, and gents, Olympic bronze medalist. You want to see, yeah, exactly, yep. Olympic bronze medalist. If you want to see some action, this is where it's at. Check this out. He's going to run to the end of the platform. Front four somersaults with two and a half twists. Currently the hardest dive the athletes are performing in this season. Here we go. Whoa, a lot going on. Huge DD on that electrifying dive by Alexei Prigorov. And look at the other divers non -stop in the hot spot. Action They're even high-fiving each yeah. other. Non-stop action from start to finish by Alexei Prigorov. As we said before, bronze medalist in the 2008 Olympics. So we know he's got the minerals. We know he's got the, I guess, the bravery to get off the platform. <laughs> Running towards the end of the platform. Arms above the head. Throw. Pike. Two twists in the middle. The legs want to pull apart there grabbing in as tight as he can. And when you talk to him, he always explains, he goes, man, you have to work as hard as you can at every single stage in the dive. We can look at the entry, we'll explain that. So throwing forwards, the abdominal strength required, so, Unreal. so strong. He's a very tall diver as well, Trey, so it's impressive that he can even do this dive. So the taller you are, the harder it is to keep the rotation going. And you can see him just a little hunched over on the entry, and he would have felt that. You can see the water pushing against his chest there. Joe just come in with a bunch of sixes there, six and a half. He'll toss that one and the low of a five and a half. Huge DD, 5.4, 97.20 on that dive. Added together with the first three, 301, and moves Prigorov into second. Orlando Duque. Remember to check out Orlando's World of Diving, his podcast, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Training for Norway. <laughs> Orlando looking very yeah. relaxed there. That's, <laughs> he's, you know, I think he's, he's enjoying I'm, his retirement, he's right? Said, I'm training hey, for man. Norway. I'm just kicking it. Is that a comeback? Is that a, is that a hint you're coming back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David Colturi from the United States, one of eight permanent divers on this 2021 World Series. Today he celebrates his 53rd career start, his first and only World Series victory in 2013 at the age of 24, which is still the youngest of any male diver to win the World Series event. Super fit right now, by the way. We'll talk about oh, that in yeah. a minute. In shape. Needs an 86-7 to pull into the lead. So Katori delivers a dive, slices through the crystal blue waters of the Mediterranean. A-OK, -okay. Orlando likes it. Will the judges? Famous for his twisting prowess. Normally he does a reverse two somersaults with five twists, choosing to play it safe, if I can call it safe. Technically, he's outstanding. So David Couture has been working very, very hard in the preseason training, doing a lot of CrossFit because he wants to build up a lot of muscle bulk because he was saying that obviously you've got the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, but you've also got probably two competitions, maybe three in between those events. So you've got to do back-to-back -back competitions every single week. So he wants to bulk up to make sure he can handle it and handle that impact. And there it is coming through the water. He's done a pretty good job, David Couture. But this is what I love. Perfect technique, big deep knee bend, huge elevation, wrapping into the twist. He's got to squeeze the body as tight as possible, waiting for the right moment to come out. Pow, there it is. Three and a half twists, and there's the Brani, which makes up the four twists in total. So he has won a competition before. I ran into him in Las Vegas about six weeks ago by the pool. Mm -hmm. I put my shirt on when I got my picture taken That's with him, right. by the way, because yeah, he was yeah. so ripped out. And so, uh, yeah, he did look super fit. He was so pumped to get back to competition. And uh, I have more stories on that Vegas trip. 
Wow. But, uh, I can't Great tell you about scores. This. Great scores. So uh, a pair of nines and nine and a half. Colturi throwing it down, getting busy here in the fourth and final round with a 124.20, 346.50. Colturi of the United States. Jets into the lead. He looks at and says, finally. <laughs> yeah, because he was saying he was really struggling in training, over-rotating a lot. But what the judges were so impressed about is that takeoff. Gary Hunt looking relaxed. You were saying, sorry, the judges were impressed with the takeoff? Yeah, so I mean, although, okay, there's a little bit of splash at the bottom, but the takeoff was so good. The form in the air was so good. You can see why he got the results there. Yeah. So that kind of does demonstrate that the judges do need to look or are looking at all parts of the dive equally and fairly. Speaking of another man who's always fit and ripped, Mikhail Navratil, Captain Energetic. Kind of grunts right there. The veteran of the sport, Mikhail Navratil, 36 years old, just turned on June 5th. Is he psyched or a little bit disappointed? I can't really get a read on it. I no, think he's pretty happy. He's always he's excited. Always having it's, a it's always hard to face. tell. Even if it's not a good dive, he's always excited. <laughs> he has the second most career starts behind Gary Hunt. This guy is packed with experience, Joby and Joey, and the only other diver along with Hunt to be a permanent diver since the very first season of the World Series, which started here in France yeah, in 2009. Right. So he only missed a few competitions due to that knee surgery. Remember that, actually, then he came back after knee surgery and won two competitions back-to-back. Right. Back. That was his first time, actually, he'd won a, a podium in the Red Bull Cliff Diving World him, Series. It took him 53 starts. 53, <laughs> but yeah, he figured it out. He got there in the end. But yeah, he's one of the veterans of the sport. He's a great character. It's always great having Mikhail Navratil around. Stuntman as well. The entertainer, yes. Yeah, that's the Mikhail Navratil that we know. <laughs> the guy who will always bring a smile to your face. Look at that, high scores has a couple nines, including a nine and a half, the high and the lower tossed. We'll see if the degree of difficulty rolls up with a 4.3, 11.80, big score. Will he pull ahead of Colturi? No. 338.65, so Mikhail Navratil. 36-year-old Czech diver in second place. Kulturi win the lead with 346.50. Preda, who we haven't seen yet in his fourth round, still sits in third. So that's impressive. And you see Hunt up there as well, and he hasn't even taken his fourth dive. So Andy Jones steps up to the plate. He and David Kulturi, very good buddies. And you spent some time with him recently in California, Joey, and caught up with uh, with Jones. I did, yeah. You babysat his daughter, didn't you? Oh, I did, actually. Yeah. Got off the plane, he said, hey, man, can you babysit the daughter? I said, uh, OK, <laughs> sure, was, why no not? I wonder why he picked you up at the airport. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Put me to work straight away. He's one of the most consistent divers on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. I mean, stuntman, free skier, baseball player. This guy does it all. So talented. You see the bell signifying the diver is ready. The judges are set. Reflection off of Orlando's glasses. Andy Jones, as always, on the money. Yes. Wow. Yes, Andy Jones. This guy always knows how to find those rip entries. He's so consistent. He's got a lot of natural ability. Anything he does, he's great at. He was a almost a pro baseballer, pro skier, stuntman working on the big Avatar movies. But what a mighty fine cliff diver. Andy Jones with the back triple triple. When I say triple triple, that's a back triple somersault with the triple twist. Okay, here we go. Watch the arms. They swing up to generate rotation, twist like a gymnast, arms wrapped across the chest, coming out, quick spot of the water into the pike position. But he's so attuned to the entry. Spent a long time working in Cirque du Soleil in Las Vegas. So he did a lot of high diving, a lot of right. work on the Russian swing various acrobatics, so he's such a well-rounded athlete. Impressive. Ooh, and there's the fist pump. <laughs> That's how you get it done. The tallest diver out here, over six feet tall. Andy Jones, lots of high scores there, hanging tough. The Americans coming on strong here in the fourth and final round between Colturi and Jones. 117 giant score on that individual dive. Let's see what it rolls up to. 348.70, first place. He pulls ahead of his good friend and teammate, David Colturi. So Jones in the lead. Just nudges in front of him ever so slightly. 
bit of rivalry amongst the Americans. Good to see that. There's Gary Hunt making his way up the ladder. Look, David Couture was saying that it's very difficult climbing up the cliff time and time again. He was saying there's a lot of fatigue in the legs. Everyone's getting pretty tired. And David Couture is one of the fittest out there. So speaking of fit, this guy is as well. 28-year-old Alessandro De Rose. You know, interesting story. You spoke with him about the downtime during COVID. Yeah, I mean, I actually spoke to him and like he was locked in his apartment and they're only allowed to get out of the apartment maybe once or once a week, or once every two weeks. So he said it was really, really tough. So I'm sure he's relieved to be back here diving again. Yeah, some divers fortunate and some not with the resources and, you know, between isolation and okay, here being we able go. to dive or not. Back arm stand, two and a somersault, three twists. He can take the lead here if he scores greater than sixes. Let's keep an eye on that or a total of 82.60. Amazing. Look at the strength. 90 feet, 27 meters above the water. And a great dive by Alessandro De Rose of Italy. The Italian superb diving. And once again, that arm stand dive, 27 meters high, 90 feet up in the air. And I think he knows he's done a great dive. But what counts is what the judges think. Perfect straight line there, using that strength in the arms to push away from the platform. You've got to feel your way in the air. So the twisting, you need to feel that. The somersaulting, you need to count the somersaults. OK, but the side angle is where the judges look at it from. That's a beautiful angle. Amazing slow motion act. See him look at the water there briefly before he wraps into the twist. Alessandro De Rose also working with the trampoline coach to make sure that he understands how to land on his feet and find that vertical line. We had an amazing competition that we watched with him when he won in Italy in Polignano Amare in front of his home crowd. One of the most exciting competitions we ever watched, no doubt. Alessandro De Rose, no doubt will take the lead here with those scores. Tattooed up rocket roller. Didn't need much to pull in front of Jones and Colturi. He does it with that 117-5-0. So a superb result for the Italian, pulling into first place. He is seventh to go of 12, for eighth to go of 12. So four divers remaining. And how about this guy? Oh, we Carlos got a story. Camino, the we... wild card diver of Spain, 31 years old. and. Only his second career start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series and has really shined so far here and put a lot of people on notice saying, you know, look, I'm, mm -hmm. I deserve to be around, boys. So after his dive, I'll explain a few things. So he's got a few world firsts here to, to talk about. With the arm stand dives, right? That's correct. So this is a very interesting dive, so arm stand reverse, otherwise known as cut through. You won't believe this. Arm stand, he'll spin back towards the platform. Carlos Amino, wow, wow, wow. So he's done three arm stands in this competition in all different directions, back arm stand, front arm stand, and that's called a reverse arm stand or cut through. <laughs> Look at Jonathan Perez and uh, Orlando Duque are just like, that was ridiculous, That's, that was huge. I know, <laughs> I know. It's hard enough just standing on the edge of the platform looking down. So this is rare, this is a world first. This dive in particular, arm stand cut through or reverse three and a half somersault. Nobody in the world has ever done this dive before and here he is at the very first competition, not playing it safe, throwing down the gauntlet and saying, OK, I'm going to go for it no matter what. You can see how, how good a shape he's in physically. Very lean, very cut and extremely strong. Beautiful aerial awareness. Carlos Firmino, bravo to you. Amazing stuff. Carlos Camino, the wild card, hanging with the big names and proving his value amongst cliff diving elite today. We'll see what the judges give him on this. He needs a 97.40 on that dive to pull into the top spot over Torose of Italy. It's going to be tight. He does it. 
100.80 on that dive. Slides in there. Gamino, the wild card diver, pulls into first. Oh, now he's got a nervous wait to look at the, what have we got, the remaining three divers to come, maybe. There's a chance he could be on the podium here today. Carlos Firmino, the first stop, the wild card. And this is what you want to do as a wild card. You want to prove yourself to see if you can get more opportunities to maybe at one point be part of the World Series and see if the as wild, a permanent diver. And see if the wild card diver can get all the rest of the divers to fold their cards. That's right. Firmino, 387. Dorose in second. The American Andy Jones in third. Colturi off the podium now in fourth. Popovich, Hunt, Preta. Yet to dive here at the first stop of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series 2021. San Rafael, France. Trace Worthington along with Joey Zuber. Thanks you guys for hanging with us so far. If you just joined us, we are coming towards the end of the men's final round in this first stop. Konstantin Popovich from Romania. Here we are, we're set in with four somersaults in the pike position. And needs a 99.40 to take the lead. Needs to get greater than sevens. It's a lot of pressure. It's 99.40, pull into the lead. Great dive there. Wow. Konstantin Popovich putting the pressure on the other divers. A disappearing act. Oh, amazing. Or a vanishing act, whichever vanishing one you act. like to yeah. use. That's yours. Wow. <laughs> Constantine, this guy is one of the main contenders and he's got more degree of difficulty to come, no doubt. You can see him visualizing the dive, blocking out, blocking it out in his mind, holding on to that pike position. He's also participated in the Olympics 2008. He was actually in the diving competition, the World Cup in Japan this year, trying to qualify the Olympics, just narrowly missed it. Exquisite pike position. The big question remains, can he push into the lead with this dive? I dare say yes. Man, this guy is mentally strong, athletic. Keep an eye out for Konstantin Popovich as always. Yeah, he just keeps getting better. And judges, eights across the board. He'll lose two of them, the remaining three, multiplied by his degree of difficulty, that judges panel led by Claudio De Miro of Italy. So a grand total on that dive, 112.80. That will be good enough to pull Popovich into the lead now with 400.40 points, putting the pressure on the final two competitors of Gary Hunt and Catalan Pereira. Got to feel good, guaranteed podium here. Got to feel good about that. Yeah. Big hug from David Kulturi. It's only his eighth career start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. He already has three podiums. Two major FINA podiums as well to back it. Fans out here loving it. Everyone enjoying the outdoors here in the French Riviera. And the crowd just keeps getting bigger. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. More and more kayaks. Trace, <laughs> I want to be there. Why aren't we commentating from one of the boats, huh? Yeah, Next know. time we got to do that. There's a bunch of men and women diving off a cliff. Let's go hang out over there. Huge cheers, huge roars for the Frenchman. Once again, from the UK, but now representing France. So. Gary Hunt on his home soil, turned 37 years old yesterday, the eight-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion, with 39 victories, 66 podiums in 79 competitions. The only competitor, male or female, to compete in every single event offered since the beginning of the World Series. That in its in own right is just a feat. Yeah. Just a feat not to get injured and not to miss one single competition. I've never heard of that before. Gary Hunt, first person in the world to do this dive. Okay, he's got a good chance here to take the lead. Just needs to score above six and a halves. 101.05, that's what we're looking for. The triple quad. There it is, folks. The once nicknamed brilliant Brit is now the fabulous Frenchman. Stylish always shows off his finesse. <laughs> Where am I? Where am I? Oh, you're in San Rafael, France. Oh, my. Oh, my. It is impressive to watch these divers performing so well after the long break. Huge crowds and huge dives pushing the limits. 
looking in fantastic shape physically as well. So he's still competing in 10 meter diving for France as well. So he said he's never felt better. Physically working very hard every single day. Very lean, very light, extremely powerful. Look at that massive jump from the platform. Squeaky clean twist, watching his feet, how they overlap there to stop the legs pulling apart. So it's pretty common for the legs to pull apart. Big question remains, how do the judges see this dive? Does he have the opportunity to win the competition in France in front of the home crowd? <laughs> the, That's a great the, shot. The unassuming character who has more King Kaakili trophies than dinner plates in his French apartment. That's right. He's using his trophies as ornaments and different cooking utensils in yeah. his house. Oh, what a relief. Finishing the competition. I'm sure the fans are appreciating what they're seeing here today. So, wow. Just putting huge pressure on the last and final diver of the 12 men. And today's competition, Catalin Peretta. He's going to need a full tank of gas in the difficulty tank. Oh. And he's going to have to slice and dice it into the Mediterranean to pull ahead of this man. Oh, my, oh, my. The tension is building, and he needs to score well. But Catalin Peretta has the chance to beat Gary Hunt. He has the chance. Imagine being on the platform. You're the last diver. You know that the win is in your grasp. <laughs> that is nerves. That is nerves right now. Last man on the platform to cap off the competition. Let's talk about this, Joey. He needs a 120.35 on this dive. So what does that mean from the judges' perspective, okay. individual judges? So the judges score out of 0 to 10. OK, 10 being perfect. He needs to score eight. That's a lot of pressure. This is a very difficult dive with high degree of difficulty, comes high risk, makes it harder to hit the dive, okay? You can play it safe and get lower scores, but he's choosing to push it. Back four somersaults with two twists in the pike position, massive DD, 5.1. Once again, reiterating, he needs eights from the judges. That's a big score with a dive like this. But this win is within his grasp. What pressure diving last and again none of these uh, athletes have dove in 637 days in official competition right nerves but imagine gary now all he can do he's done his job he just has to sit back and wait oh man <laughs> goosebumps as we're waiting for this dive san rafael france what an opener for the season Can he do it? Boom! Catlin Pred of the powerhouse. Wow. Look at that dive. Under no pressure. Way. Gary Hunt knows it. Catlin Peretta no from Romania. Way. Trace Worthington. What an outstanding performance by Catalan Preda from start to finish, the way he's looked throughout training, dive by dive in the competition. He just looks so focused. You can see him feeling that energy. He's got the vibe before the dive. Jumping up. God, look at his technique. One half twist. Pike coming around there. And Powell pulling himself through the water, flattening the feet to make sure he can get the rip entry. Rip comes from the sound it makes when you hit the water. You can hear that tearing. Okay, Trace, I just want to see the judges scores right now. That's all I want to see. That's what we want to know. Will Catalan Preda take the lead and win the competition here today at, at the very first stop? At minimum, most likely he will have his personal best. He has two third place finishes in his Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series career. And that should move right in there. But the question is, will the judges put him above Hunt or not? He needs a 120.35 on that dive. What a performance here. There you have it, Joey. Yep. He will toss out a 9.5 and, and a 9, but keep three of them. You multiply that by the degree of difficulty, and he will come through with a huge score here on this individual dive and most likely move into the lead. We're waiting for its official 137.70. Preta has done it.
How is it possible to dive so well at the very first tour stop? Most of the divers take a long time just to get back into the rhythm, but here he is, focused, and he's taken the lead from Gary Hunt. Sure, Gary's a little bit upset not to win in front of his home crowd, but he's always gracious in defeat. He's a true sportsman. Kathleen <laughs> Prada, be proud today. It is your day, a well-deserved win, dive by dive. I asked he you, showed this guy is a force to be reckoned with. No doubt about it. I mean, he, you, I asked you two days ago, I said, let's mm -hmm. talk about the players. Who's your call? And you said, Trace, expect Preda to be a threat this season. Yep. And don't be surprised. He's in really good shape. Don't be surprised if he pulls something special in this first competition. You were dead on. And he was so meticulous with his training. So you and I were watching his training in the preseason, all this technical workouts that he's doing. I mean, he's absolutely lean. He's very careful with his diet, making sure he's very structured with his training, his acrobatic skills, his aerial awareness. And he has come out with all guns blazing. <laughs> what a start to the season. This is thrilling. This is what we wanted to see. Trace Worthington, it's great to be back. He had all the sauce and spice needed to win this event today. <laughs> well, some spicy diving, let me tell you. <laughs> Man, he's going to celebrate tonight, huh? When a well-deserved win. This is what we want to see. We want to see this new generation coming through. And it's nice. We're seeing all these different dives as well. Everyone's showing off, you know, these, these different aspects of the sport technically extremely proficient and wow. he's got a lot of confidence now and now his first ever red bull cliff diving world series victory 29 years old another june diver turns 30 on june 29. take a bow mr preta super competition super super there we go twist up that beard <laughs> he's got a nice full-length beard over the off time so something we're not used to seeing here, Joey. Gary Hunt in second place. Catalin Pareto with an amazing performance here at the first stop of the 2021 season with the gold. And look at that, he does it by a long shot over Gary Hunt and Konstantin Popovich grabbing the bronze today. What a huge performance. And just starting the season off, all these guys haven't missed a beat. And you say Prigorov in ninth, Alberto Devora rounds out the top 12. Let's head down to the platform with David O'Queeve, who's with the champion. Catherine Pereira is getting celebrated here by everyone, but Catherine, you did it. Talk me through the emotions you're experiencing right now. Did it, it happened, you know, it's the end. And yeah, yeah, it happened as I, as I wanted it to happen. And I'm extremely happy that uh, that it happened today and it happened this way and in front of this crowd, off of that rock, it can't be more magical. And the experience up there, the emotions, the pressure after Gary, how did that go down? Yeah, Gary had a, had a great home crowd, huge, great cheering. Um, I tried to mind my thing, what I needed to do, and uh, it went good, it went well. Thank you so much and congratulations. Joey, there's, there's one other man who we talk about who's a wild card diver that really put on a huge performance, and, and it is one of the all-time greatest performances uh, in Alessandro De Rose when he is a wild card diver winning in Italy. But this just is special when you see Preda coming in as a wild card diver and knocking down the big guns. Oh, absolutely. It was just so, you could see he was so focused and he was obviously talking about how he just wanted to concentrate what he needed to do. So just recapping here, this is the third place, Konstantin Popovich, another Romanian. So the two Romanian powerhouses. And so the former Olympian shows what he's got. The thing about Konstantin Popovich, he's got some new dives up his sleeve. So I think that he'll be preparing that between the big break. And there's the eight times Rebel Cliff Diving World Series champion, Gary Hunt in second place. And I know he's going to want to make sure he puts the pedal on the gas to see if he can take another win at the next tour stop. But the man of the hour, the man of the day, the man here in France, Catalan Preda, with one sensational performance. I am utterly, utterly impressed with this man.
He's just very <laughs> calm mentally as well. So he, he knew what he needed to do coming into this competition. Block out the noise. You've got to be in your own bubble and just concentrate on what you need to do. Don't worry about anyone else or what's happening around you. And here's our flower ceremony. Konstantin Popovic. An embrace with Gary Hunt, second place. Ah, Gary Hunt still looking stronger than ever. Confident. I like his French shirt there. Oh, that's really typical, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Very French Riviera. <laughs> <laughs> but the day belongs to this man, 29-year-old Catalin Pereira of Romania. Will win the first stop of the 2021 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Awesome. Thank you. Nice little Mito watch there. Nice. Yes. New watch. And big celebrations here tonight in France. Pereira Gold. Hunt in silver. Popovic of Romania in third. What an outstanding day for the men here at the first stop of the 2021 series. Catalan Pereira will celebrate tonight and a beautiful setting and a beautiful day for all the divers as he will now lead the points, kicking off the season. That will be a great jump start to earning a permanent diver spot for the 2022 season. Gary Hunt now representing France in second and Konstantin Popovic in third. Top Americans, Andy Jones in sixth. You have Colturi in seventh there and Navratil, the experienced one, rounds out the top eight. So there you have it, the top 10 and Catalin Pereira winning but first, let's go down to David O'Quive, who's standing by with the new French citizen, Gary Hunt. <laughs> okay, so Gary Hunt, right now, you have been humble in victory and humble in defeat. How was it there with the French crowd behind you? Oh, it's amazing. I, I've never had a competition in England before, so I haven't felt that, that hometown uh, cheer. So to do it here, uh, it was a great start to this season. Amazing. And going ahead forward into the rest of the season, what are the big expectations? Has this lit a fire within you? Absolutely. Yeah, you can see that the level has really risen in two years without any competition. Everyone's been working hard, so uh, I've got my work cut out for me, but I'm really up for the challenge. Amazing. We're looking forward to it. Thank you, Guy. Always up for the challenge he is, Gary, that's for sure. Okay, he's very calm and very gracious, but beneath the surface, I know he's a strong competitor and he wants to come back strong at the next competition, no doubt. So he was actually talking to me and he was saying he may consider doing a front quad twist. So he's going to look at the field really? and see if they start to push him. And if that's the case and he finds that he's not winning, then he may throw down a little trump card there <laughs> to see what he can do to push the limits, as he always done, a pioneering uh, athlete. Well, one series event down safe and sound so what does our next stop have in common with ballet and music well because the divers will be launching from the oslo opera house home of the norwegian national opera and ballet a new and interesting location for the divers joey this should be fun it will be so norway like you said we've had quite a few competitions there before looking to impress the crowds in a city landscape this time so sometimes we're in the natural environments and sometimes in urban environments so obviously the in urban urban occasions you can have these massive crowds like you see here yeah. copenhagen we also dove from the roof for the opera house there but the opera house is going to be a new star but for now well folks i am confident i can speak on behalf of the resilient divers and our entire broadcast and communications team we are thrilled and fortunate to be back thank you all for your hard work and passion guys and thank you to the fans for sticking with us. With that, on behalf of David O'Quive and Joey Zuber, I'm Trace Worthington. We'll see you at our next stop, Oslo, Norway. Goodbye from France.